G'day guys, welcome to round four of the Men of War Anzac Mail Tournament number two. Today we've got a Ripper here. We've got Roachford on the UK team versus Spoozy on the Germany team. Uh, both of them are real life friends and I'm sure they won't be holding back in this game here. So both of them have similar kind of tactics as well. Um, both opting for tank usage instead of infantry, but they are both also very skilled um, in all areas of the gaming. So it will be a very, very close game, I think. As we see Spoozy splitting his forces into three. And, sorry, Roachford is splitting forces into three. And Spoozy has also moved up his forces into the middle. Um, has managed to capture the center. As Roachford has got a few guys here just waiting to cap the western flag. Uh, Spoozy manages to get that wall uh, initially. So it's quite important to actually move your troops very quickly to your positions at the start otherwise you'll be facing an enemy in a position of cover as you can see now Rotrid was a bit slow to move at the start so nice grenading here by Spoozy so it's 2 on 2 at the moment on this flag but these guys are under cover and one of these guys is the STG assault squad leader so it shouldn't have a problem taking out this flag here whilst on the western flag here seems to be going towards Spoozy as well so it is a uh, two on three at the moment though so Rochford has the possibility to come and grenade there and in the middle here Rochford is having difficulties making any inroads here but is trying to sneak some guys into grenade which is a very good idea to hassle keep hassling the middle as much as you can and there goes a grenade by Spoozy Rochford dodges and Another guy takes him out, so it's three on one at the moment. No, there's another one over here, so it's two on three here. He needs one flag here as he's lost the eastern flag and the center flag. He really needs western flag now to avoid a three cap. So maybe a bit of slow of micro here by Roachford. He hasn't grenaded these guys in cover, and Spoozy has really got the jump on him now, throwing that grenade, but aimed quite far away from the troops. But Nice AT grenade there by Spoozy, improvising very quickly Shoot on my signal. as Roachford throws another pineapple grenade and takes out uh, the remaining soldier, but there's one more here which could cap it back. So not quite a three cap yet for Spoozy, but he's got this MG in this great position of cover there, being able to take out anything that comes in the middle. And there's only a few troops of Roachford here. But on the eastern flag here, Rochford is trying to make an assault. But Spoozy is really pushing in hard, um, not only behind cover here, but he's running down here, so he's able to actually get some sort of crossfire happening here. And one of these guys is also the assault squad leader and can pretty much uh, have great accuracy and be able to take these guys out. So very good play by Spoozy, moving his troops forward more. Um, he could even maybe even go further and even sneak a guy. He's probably even got a guy he's sneaking there. So Rochard is looking on the back foot here. Um, just really spamming assault squads at the moment. Just trying to get a flag. Uh, here comes the half track from Rochard. In my opinion, maybe the right, right hand side flag is probably the best option. Because the reason for that is because there's lots of infantry there. So there's lots of targets for this half track to kill. And he's got some support as well here. As on the left, if he went to the left side, there's only two or three infantry to kill, so it's not really worth it. But he really needs to run these guys at the same time. So there should be an assault squad guy running here, giving him sight, as this guy is a sitting duck from, from guys coming from here or here. Uh, as you can see, there's a vet sniper there, which should be a priority target by Roachford. Nice. He's spotted that, and he's going straight for it. He definitely should be going for that now, but the 2-2-2 two 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 is here. Can he? <laughs> that sniper just hides behind cover there. So he, he... Bad luck there. He could have actually taken that 2 to 2 from the side at that yeah, range. Boy. And he also missed the sniper. So a free 50 cal there for Spoozy as well. As on the eastern front, he now... This 2 2 is going to have a field day. Nice move by Spoozy here. Moving the guys in forward to get line of sight for that 2 to 2 to kill anything in front of it. So Spoozy is doing very well with his supporting units here. So he can move that assault infantry a bit more further up now, maybe even all the way down here to f uh, spot any other infantry because Roachford would definitely not have any counters by now uh, other than the AT rifle, which he may be able to afford. But there goes the, <laughs> the AT 
anti, um, sorry, the rifle of the assault rod squad missing. But Rotrud has managed to capture the eastern point now, and it's 0 to 30 at this stage. And he gets a Tetriarch, a bit of a risky buy here, as it needs to stay in the 110 range, as that 222 can fire and kill it quite easily in the 90 range. Uh, but it is, he is running away now, so he but he, has, he, could pen, he could have penetrated the, in that range as well. So Rotrud needs to stay back, he can't go much forward. So that 2-2 is going for him now. Can he get one shot off? He gets the shot right on the side, one shot lucky. If that shot missed, I would have said that 2-2 two two would have easily taken that out because it has a fast rate of fire. And Rotrud is supported by the Tetra. He's pushing up the middle. Kills the guy capturing him, but uh, also kills himself in the process. So he is moving a few more over. I must say, lots of risky plays here by Rochford um, and risky tank usage still. So he hasn't actually changed that part of his game plan. As on the left, uh, eastern side, sorry, the western side here, Spoozy is moving in the Soul Squad. And Rochford is making good use of the map, moving into a nice position of cover on this left side. Um, and he could possibly even start running guys over since they're pretty pinned down at the moment. Start moving guys along here with the grenade. So if they had the micro for it, ideally that would be the thing they would be doing is to quickly take these guys out and infest this area here. Maybe camp somewhere behind this rock. Just make um, Spoozy delayed. So any 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 delays basically for Spoozy as when he assaults the flag in the future. So here is an assault squad charging up for Spoozy. It's going to get a grenade to the face. And there goes a nice grenade there by Rochford there. And he is now capping the majority of flags, so the points will start ticking towards his favour. It's 38 though to Spoozy, and Rochford is 0 at the moment. He's got a while to catch up, but I must say he is still definitely near the chance now, because Rochford's game is definitely improved middle game when he can actually buy the tanks he wants, as he is a superb tank user. It's a nice grenade, 80 grenade there by Rochford, takes out half the assault squad there. Spoozy's assault here looking very weak, just running his whole force in the back of the house, um, clumping them together, being a very easy target for the grenades. So, machine gunner here by Rochford, nice positioning here. We'll be able to pin down and take out any user units trying to capture this flag, but he is now missing infantry in this area here, as one of these guys can quite easily sneak. Uh, but he does have, uh, Spoozy has taken out his last infantryman there, there's a flak 38, goodbye there by Spoozy. He is trying to take out that MG, that MG needs to get the hell out of there, ASAP. As this Tetrarch won't have a chance versus that 38, um, he really needs to shoot that AP shot onto there. Once he shoots the AP shot, he can take it out with the HE, but here's a hard count here by Rochford in the form of a M4A4. And also a black watch squad here from Rochford going to the right hand side point. So the centre is now being capped, but this Sherman can take that flag out. The table will be turned quite quickly. So there isn't some country in the centre here giving eyesight for this tank here. So that is a good play by Rochford. But it is tracked in a dangerous position, so it is a possibility that um, Spoozy would have gone a P3 or some t other light tank or um, heavy tank that can, medium heavy tank that can take it out from the side quite easily from this area here. As a Brandenburger guy is coming, so he's got the Brandenburgers. So Spoozy does need to watch out here because there isn't actually any guys in this area here. A Brandenburger can quite easily sneak to this position and shoot without the, sh the Sherman with even see uh, without the Sherman even spotting it. So, Flack in a dangerous position here. So Rochford is trying to capture it. A bit of a cocky move there because I don't think he had, would have had a chance to actually hold it. But uh, the Sherman is still pounding away at that Flack. It is definitely a priority target and he needs to take that out now. So, uh, Rochford is now moving some guys to the right. Qu rather unconvincingly, I'm not too sure what he's trying to achieve. But at least he could probably spot some units in this area. And the Tetrarch is coming in to support them now. And it's got main gun damage, um, this Sherman. I'm not too sure from what... Um, something in the distance somewhere. Let's just wait for a second shot. But it is track... Uh, the track has just got repaired and is, it is able to escape. I think maybe a, even a Brandenburger just came by to take that out. 
And here comes the Tetrarch. It is supported now by some infantry. Rotrad needs to move some guys behind the cover, but also watch out because there's a sniper there, so he needs to keep moving them quite quickly. There's only two two guys here, so he needs to maybe move it really fast and maybe down all the way here. Try to get lucky, escape the, escape that H, and in the same uh, reason, um, he is being very suicidal, just going head on straight and cops an AT grenade, uh, which is quite expected there, and that H easily counters that Sherman. Um, so, Spoozy looking very good in this open map at the moment, buying um, a good counter, Flak 38, a H, it's very formidable versus a UK um, opponent at this stage, as the UK could not possibly take these out until he gets either um, uh, either a Firefly or maybe an Archer or maybe even the uh, what's that new tank called that just uh, the Comet. So they're quite all quite expensive tanks at 800 MP to 850 MP to take out a 550 MP tank because otherwise, if you go something a bit cheaper, you <laughs> you basically have to outplay your opponent through these buildings and hit them from the side with APC R round. So not looking good for Rotrid at this stage. I would say Rotrid is the type of player though that does like to buy heavy counters, certain counters, so I'm thinking he might be going a uh, Comet here, which is quite a safe buy. But he is behind the flags by quite a bit, 38 to 5, so... But he does have a bit of time as he has got this western flag quite secure at the moment. So now he's assaulting the right, the eastern flag with a few infantry, but they seem to be quite stationary. There must be a problem with the micro. I'm not sure where he's microing. He must be microing this area here, sneaking a bunch of Anzacs behind the lines, but they don't have stealth, so I'm sure they've already been spotted by that guy over there. As we can see, Spoozy is actually sneaking in as well. Some little Brandenburger guys, which is always a good idea to sneak Brandenburgers behind the lines, because there is actually plenty of sneaking positions or sneaking points where he can come through Spoozy. Um, so he, he might even have some Brandenburgers already here, waiting for that Comet or Heavy Tank to come out, which is a very good play if he has. And he, the H here is still sitting by that uh, heel here. It's actually playing quite defensive. So a counter that comes out won't be able to really take that H out. That H is just hiding at the moment because it doesn't actually need to come out at this stage. The H probably only needs to come out when um, when Rotra does get the all econ because that will definitely cause a lot of damage to the infantry in the area. So that H is safely sitting behind there, which is a good play there. And here comes a Spoozy with a 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Goodbye at this stage as Rochford does not have any AT capability whatsoever. Um, before this match, Rochford was saying um, he's definitely weaker on these open field maps compared to Spoozy, and Spoozy was saying the same thing. So it looks like <laughs> Rochford has... Um, Rashford and Spoozy are, is, do know each other very well and know their game very well, but here's a comment as <laughs> I expected. Quite a hard counter for those units on the field, and it's a decent buy at this stage, but he really needs to make sure there's no Brandenburgers here, because there's lots of uh, vast empty space here, which you can would have sneaked through, sneaked through guys through, um, excuse my English, as a <laughs> 2, two, two here is coming down, <laughs> mowing down the light defense Rotrid has here. He's only got two guys on this western front here and is ris risking a three cap very badly here as uh, <laughs> any infantry can just run in there and capture it and a three cap would basically mean doom at this stage of the game when he is so far on so, so far behind on the points. 5 to 52. But now that H is hiding behind that hill and can pop out any moment and it is possibly in a range. It's actually in a range that H can damage it. Nice shot there by Rotrid. As you can see, Rotrid, <laughs> Rotrid does some really unbelievable shots with his tanks. He, he is quite accurate and uses them very well. And he's going for that 2-2-2 two, two, two now, which is definitely a priority target at this stage. So good choice by him. He needs to really kill that and then stop the cap off this flag here and move this infantry to, to regain this point ASAP because a three cap will basically mean he will lose in five minutes or so. So he's reinforcing that point, which is a good play to him. And he could possibly take out that H, actually. The H is just standing there. I think he has a shot on it. But infantry militia of the militia kind are moving into the center now. 
He should really hold fire on this guy, because at the moment he's just going to fire and fire and it's going to die. If he holds fire, he'll get that point. But, ah, oh, there it is. There's that Brandenburger I was worried about the whole time. So he must have snuck through here. Very well done to Spoozy. He's definitely learning how to play, I guess, less a, a game that's less dominated just by tanks. He's willing to use a bit of the tricky ninja units as well, such as the Brandenburger. So that's a perfect, perfect example on how you use a Brandenburger in a one versus one in a map like this where there is a lot of empty space. So Roachford is um, not it's not looking good for Roachford at the moment with two two flags here pretty much secure very tightly by that H which is going to be repaired to and this H will definitely come out here and finish this Comet off hopefully for Spoozy and that flag 38 is basically dominating the whole field um, so there's no option here for <laughs> Roachford to really cap the middle or even maybe this flag here but <laughs> as we see here he is risking no he's easily mowed down that Vulture Force so I think Spoozy is also capped in CP because he's definitely not capped in MP as you can see Spoozy 150 points and Redford on 67 points so he has a lot of MP but he's definitely capped on CP with that H infantry holding the middle flak here and also probably infantry here holding here but here's an M4 A4 not a good buy in my opinion because that H had ample time to repair it definitely has that um, definitely has that gun repaired right now no maybe not no yeah it definitely is because he's peeking out being the aggressor, Roadshot really needs to run into this run into this alleyway here. Or maybe even hide behind the comet. Hide behind the comet, show your side armor. Wow. As you can see with Roadshot here. His tank his tanks are uncannily accurate here, so that basically saves the day. This has the possibility of taking that flag. And even possibility of taking that H if he dares. If he can push his infantry up fast enough. This flag 38 is really lasting a bit too long for my liking. As finally he gets that flak 38 and he must be really happy with that finally to get that annoying unit there but another Brandenburger here sneaking West Boozy he's definitely being a tricky tricky guy this game as an Anzac squad there has spotted him and is having trouble killing him though but in the middle here Rashford is following up that kill of that Black 38 with an assault squad to capture it. But this um, H is definitely being repaired. And it's tracked now, so it does actually have a shot at it from maybe here. If I was Spoozy, I'll come from this angle here through this house and just take it out with APCR. Or if you can get your infantry close enough, um, support it and go even closer. But it's main gun damage again. Spoozy is making the shots at the moment and turreted as well. So he's got the middle back. I didn't. In I guess <laughs> it was quite lucky of him to actually do that, but he he does. In, in I wouldn't have put money on Roachford to actually get the middle and take out that H's main gun. So it was quite lucky there. But here's the miter here, and a nice move by Roachford. Does bounce though, because the H is in a very strange angle. It's angled uh, so that 80 grenade did bounce. So that bad luck there for Roachford as nice follow-up there by Roadford taking out the martyr from the side he spotted it and he's able to take full advantage of it as you can see Roadford's tank usage is very um, risky but if if it pays off it really pays off because it charges it in takes it all the units in sight and uh, pulls back but he does need to push more infantry here there is an opportunity for Roadford to just come down here and then grenade this tank because there's only Voltrum here could sit around here, just throw random AP grenades around here, and then seal the deal. But, uh, that's quite obvious that it would have happened. There was definitely, he definitely should have known that there was a squad there just waiting for him. But look at that, Rochford's tank usage <laughs> is uncannily accurate. The side arm is exposed here, dangerously. Spoozy just needs to back off a bit. He's being too cocky here. He, <laughs> this H, losing this H would be quite disastrous here by Spoozy. And it's going to be quite hard for him to kill him when his turret's down. But there goes the main gun. Spoozy could follow up right now. Uh, I'd say Spoozy is the person that will do that. But there is a Brandenburger. I don't know what it's doing. I think maybe it doesn't have an a AT round. But that Brandenburger behind there could cause some major damage if it has the AT grenade still. And he's choosing to finish off this H here. So it's two H's by Spoozy. So it's... So Spoozy choosing to go the hard counters versus the Sherman where 
maybe you just don't need to kill this shaman at the moment because you can just avoid avoid it at this stage because it doesn't actually have it an all econ that you need to kill and this as well i think is also repaired so roachford is really looking strong on the field he's got he's trailing behind by quite a bit and he's finally seen that and that's gone he definitely didn't have an at grenade but he's got a Cromwell repaired. He's got a, Sherm a Sherman here and a stuck by. So Spoozy's just playing a tank versus tank thing here, which is not good in my opinion because he's got a H that's stuck in the field. He doesn't have any CP for infantry. He definitely needs more infantry to take advantage. Like, look at this flag here. Instead of going for the tanks, he should just come down here, in my opinion, to with an airborne squad or with um, an allied infantry squad and capture that. Instead of buying a tank versus tank um, fight here, it's not really worth it. Um, there's no real purpose of it other than to kill the tank and the real purpose of it is to gain territory and a flag so 72 to 18 Rochford is going to be slowly ticking back now Spoozy still in still in it with a big lead I've got a feeling this is going to be a very long game and I'm very hungry so <sighs> I'm not very happy with that but it, it, it's going to be good to watch I think so here's, here's an Xeta AA pushing on the right side Goodbye by Roachford here. He definitely needs something of this kind of this kind of weaponry that will be able to take down infantry very easily. As and it also could bait some of these units. As this tug looks like it is definitely not in a good position, especially because there's a slight heal there, and because of the, the gun and the low profile of this, it's very hard to actually shoot beyond that heal. But here comes a stug coming in very aggressively, um, quite suicidally. Um, but he is going for the Crusader, but that Sherman can just waltz right in and take it from the side if it wants to. I think maybe he's having trouble. Um, there it is. So takes that from the side. Spoozy with very risky tank play there, which and a very, I guess, bad buy in my opinion, having two tanks in the field as well. And a Stug is not cheap, a cheap unit as well. That's 800 MP. An 800 MP unit to take out. Um, let's have a look. I can't remember. 440 MP tank there. So. 8 infantry there, uh, Voltstrom, Voltstrom as well, and Rochford <laughs> is going to 3 cap, all because Fuzzy bought a tank and bought two tanks and didn't have enough infantry, and attacked it from basically a wrong angle. If you wanted to really make use of the Stug, he needs a long um, range of, um, a long view basically to view things, so if he runs all the way down here maybe and come with the stug down here, he, he will be able to shoot all the way um, on the eastern side and the middle of the map basically. So uh, this squad here, which is a squad of assault squads, will be caught with their pants down. Here comes the AA Crusader, which will easily mow them down as they run for cover. Um, the saving grace at the moment for Spoozy would be that H, which I can hear it in the distance. It's probably moving to the left to take out that Crusader AA, which is a good a good target to have, but Spoozy here risking a 3 cap here, he is going to get a 3 cap, uh, Rochford is going to get a 3 cap, and as you can see the score wise has been tilted, 156, so Spoozy hasn't killed anything since uh, Rochford was on about 70 points, now it's 189 to 156, Rochford definitely in the lead in kills, and now his points are going to tick 2 per second basically with that 3 cap, so it's 41 to 72, Rochford is ticking up really fast, Spoozy needs to come up with the H really quickly and come in there, take out that H, take out that AA. Uh, but no, this again, he comes up with the tank exposing the side to the Sherman. So I don't think Rochford has noticed yet, but he could quite easily take the side shot, but now he has. He's baited that, that H does need to turn. <laughs> side shot misses. Crusader AA has been taken up with the H. The H turns just in time, but can Spoozy get another shot? It bounces at the side. Now, it, now it's in a position where that H can take out that Sherman. Uh, Spoozy playing a bit conservative at the moment, may maybe because he just got main gunned by that Sherman twice in a row, which he shouldn't really uh, have been done, as that H definitely should have taken out that Sherman both those times. But wow, wow, you see, you can see Roachford how, I don't know how, how he does it, to be honest. His tank usage is quite incredible. He gets the shots sometimes um, when you shouldn't re-get the shots. I wouldn't have picked that to win at all. So both units dead. The AA is dead, so it's possible for this to cap the point. And he's that machine gunner to cover. The machine gunner is just charging into a bad usage there by Spoozy. The AT infantry and machine gunner got mowed down, so he really needed to 
have a place to um, shoot. But another buy of a Crusader A, which is a fantastic buy here by Roachford. Uh, Spoozy will definitely not have a counter, and there goes that 2 2 easily down. So it's 85 to 7, 86 to 72. I would call it a GG, and Spoozy does call it a GG as well. So 89. Spoozy has quit the game. So good start by Spoozy. Just a few bad buys in, in, in there. Bit of bad tank usage, and also Roachford did actually have quite a bit of luck with uh, those tanks. But the Brandenburgers were used well by Spoozy. But all in all, he bought the wrong tanks there. That cost too much MP, and that Sherman was able to counter it quite easily. So, good game. Well done to Roachford, and good luck in the next match.